The last time Washington made it to the college football playoff was in 2016 when they took on number one Alabama in the Peach Bowl, a game many Husky fans would like to forget as Bama cruised to a 24-7 win. It was also the last time a Pac-12 team made the college football playoff. This time around, the Husky faithful will hope for a different result as they have put together one of their best seasons in program history. They will be entering the Sugar Bowl matchup against Texas as the two seed and are hoping to complete a perfect season. This is how Washington got here. This is the road to the playoff, Washington edition. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I am planning to release a video every day from now until Christmas. Also, let me know if you think the committee got the rankings right and who wins the national title in the comment section below. The Washington Huskies came into the season with high expectations under head coach Kalen DeBoer, who finished his first year in Seattle with an 11-2 record. DeBoer arrived after serving as head coach Sioux Falls from 2005 until 2009, where he led them to three NAIA national championships, a fourth appearance in the title game, and a semifinal appearance in his first year as head coach. He put together three undefeated seasons and finished with a 67-3 record and a 49-1 conference record before he jumped to the FCS and FBS level, serving as an offensive coordinator for Southern Illinois, Eastern Michigan, Fresno State, and Indiana. He was named head coach at Fresno State in 2020 and finished with a 12-6 record in two seasons with the Bulldogs. DeBoer was hired at Washington to replace Jimmy Lake after he put together a 7-6 record in two seasons, which was marred with controversy throughout, including shoving a player on national TV. Washington's back-to-back -back road losses to UCLA and Arizona State cost them not only an opportunity to play in the conference title game, but also the college football playoff. They finished the year beating Texas 27-20 in the Alamo Bowl. Entering the 2023 season, they were coming off a year where they finished second in offense behind Tennessee and a top eight finish. There was a lot of excitement surrounding the program, and they were also announcing that they would be joining the Big Ten for the 2024 season. They returned one of the nation's most dangerous offenses and had a strong defense headlined by a very disruptive front six. Michael Penix Jr. chose to return for one last season after reviving his career in Seattle. Penix played high school football at Tampa Bay Technical High School, throwing for 4,243 yards and 61 touchdowns to six interceptions in two years as a school starting quarterback. He was rated a three-star recruit from 2018 and chose to attend Indiana over the likes of Florida State, Tennessee, and Arizona. As a true freshman, he played in three games before tearing his ACL and entered the 2019 season with DeBoer as his offensive coordinator as the Hoosier starting quarterback. But yet again, injuries derailed his season as he only played in six games, throwing for 1,394 yards and 10 touchdowns to four interceptions. He finished the season going 5-1 as the starting quarterback. In 2020, he once again could only play in six games during the shortened season throwing for 1,645 yards, 14 touchdowns, and four interceptions, would tear his ACL once again. He once again went 5-1 as a starter and helped Indiana have one of their best seasons in recent history. In 2021, he only played in five games throwing for 939 yards, four touchdowns, and seven interceptions. He decided to enter the transfer portal after the season and was viewed as the 23rd best quarterback in the portal. He reunited with DeBoer in Seattle and won the starting job heading into the 2022 season. He had a stellar 2022 season leading the FBS in passing yards for the regular season, averaging 357 yards per game, became the Washington Huskies all-time single season passing leader during the Alamo Bowl with 4,641 passing yards, 31 touchdowns and 8 interceptions, while also adding 4 rushing touchdowns on the ground. He was named the AP Comeback Player of the Year and finished 8th in the 2022 Heisman voting. Washington entered the 2023 season primed for an even better year with the return of a pair of 1,000-yard receivers and Rome Aduze, who had 1,145 yards and 7 touchdowns in 2022, and Jalen McMillan, who finished last season with 1,098 yards and 9 touchdowns. They also added former Mississippi State running back Dylan Johnson and former Michigan State wide receiver Jeremy Bernard through the transfer portal. While starting tackle Troy Fontanu and Roger Rosengarten are returning, the Huskies needed to fill the interior of the offensive line after losing three players to graduation. The offensive line was going to be an important factor on whether they could keep Penix healthy or not this season. On the defensive side of the ball, 
Braylon Trice returned after leading the nation in 2022 with 67 pressures and 9 sacks. He headlined a key group of players. The question mark of the team was going to be the secondary, which ranked 100th in the country against the pass in 2022. In response, the coaching staff attacked the transfer portal, securing the services of an elite cornerback in Oklahoma State's and Jabbar Mahama. They had a tough schedule on paper heading into the 2023 season, traveling to East Lansing to take on Michigan State, and facing USC and Utah in back-to-back weeks, but were favorites to win the Pac-12 by many. Washington started the season off strong, blowing out Boise State, Tulsa, and Michigan State on the road by a combined 140-36. They played Cal in their Pac-12 opener, heading into halftime up 45-12, and finished the game with 14 second-half points, leading to a final score 59-32 behind Penix's 304 yards and four touchdowns. They survived a tough battle on the road against Arizona behind Penix's 363 passing yards, but the Wildcats kept him out of the end zone. Johnson rushed for 91 yards and two touchdowns on the ground to propel the Huskies to a 31-24 win. Battle test any top team needs to have if they want to make a title run. And after the way Arizona finished the season, a great win over a great up-and-coming team. Their next test came after their bye in what many considered to be the game of the season. In 2022, the Huskies had an amazing comeback win over Oregon, and this time they were hosting their arch rivals in Seattle, with game day in town and everyone around the country watching. They entered the game averaging over 46 points per game, and many expected Oregon to pull off the win as they were viewed by many as the better team. Penix found Giles Jackson four minutes into the game to take the lead. Oregon responded five minutes later with a lengthy drive aided by penalties and scored a touchdown and the subsequent two-point conversion to take an 8-7 lead. Penix found Polk on a beautiful pass to take the lead 14-8 at the end of the first quarter. Washington went into halftime up 22-18 after a late pick by Penix. Washington extended the lead in the third quarter when Penix found a Duze, but they entered the fourth quarter in a tight game up 29-26. After a tough run by Jordan James, Oregon took the lead for the first time since the first quarter to go up 33-29 with 13 minutes left in the game. With two minutes left, Penix made a beautiful throw to Polk to give the Huskies the momentum towards the end of the game and set them up in the red zone. With 139 left, Penix connected with the Duze to take the lead 36-33. Oregon drove down the field but would miss the game-tying 43-yard field goal to give Washington a huge win. Yet Washington found themselves in a battle against 1-5 Arizona State, being down 7-3 entering the third quarter the following week. Where last year's team might have failed to find a way to win, this year's team, filled with veterans, fought their way back to take the lead with an 89-yard interception return for a touchdown with 8-11 left, and iced the game with an 8-play 62-yard drive to kick a field goal to win 15-7. They would go on to beat Stanford 42-33, beat USC in a shootout 52-42, and survived three close games to finish the season, which included a 35-28 win over number 13 Utah, a 22-20 win over number 12 Oregon State, and a 24-21 win in the Apple Cup against in-state rival Washington State, kicking a game-winning field goal to survive. Throughout the tail end of the regular season, Washington continued to hear that they got lucky against Oregon and that the Ducks were the better team. They entered the Pac-12 title game as 9.5-point underdogs, with many feeling that the Ducks could win the game and make the college football playoffs. Yet, when push came to shove, Washington dominated Oregon, even though the score does not show it. They took a 20-3 lead over Oregon with a minute 39 left in the the first half, but Oregon scored with 9 seconds left to enter halftime, down 20-10 to to Washington. Oregon would take the lead in the third, but Washington fought back to win 34-31, and held off a late game comeback by the Ducks. I was at the game and Washington looked like the better team on the field with Johnson rushing for 152 yards and Penix throwing for 319 yards. The Huskies finished their last season in the Pac-12 undefeated and conference champions. They were given the number two seed for the playoff this past weekend and will take on number three Texas in the Sugar Bowl. Penix has put together a great season throwing for 4,218 yards, 33 touchdowns and nine interceptions, is viewed as a Heisman finalist. He also rushed for three touchdowns on the ground. The Huskies averaged 37.7 points per game, which ranks 11th nationally and only allowed 23.6 points per game on defense. Johnson rushed for 1,113 yards, 14 touchdowns on the ground, while Duze finished with 1,428 receiving yards 
and 13 touchdowns, and Polk finished with 1,000 receiving yards and 8 touchdowns. Entering the Sugar Bowl, Texas is viewed as a 4.5-point favorite at the time of recording, but this Washington team is special. This Washington team is special, and I'm excited to watch the offensive fireworks between the Huskies and Longhorns on New Year's Day. What do you think? Did the committee get it right? And who wins the national title? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.